I am Joanna Carino. I am an Ibaloy woman, a senior citizen, and a survivor of martial law. So when martial law was declared in 1972, I was a student activist. Actually, na organisa ako mga 69 siguro sa University of the Philippines Baguio. I was a member of Kabataang Makabayan and. Uh, um, those were exciting days, <laughs> days of the first quarter storm, when so many of the youth went out into the streets seeking to change uh, uh, an acceptable system. Parang there was a general awakening eh, nung panahon ng mar ng before martial law, yung first quarter storm. Parang talagang general awakening kasi Kung sa buong Pilipinas, hundreds of thousands went out into the streets. Kung dito sa Baguio, sumasabay. So, there were chapters of progressive organizations in all of the schools in Baguio. And, siyempre, um, using the student paper to speak about the issues. And then the marches were getting very frequent. <laughs> Mga ganyan. Nagkaroon ng Diliman Commune, nagkaroon din ng... Um, barricade actually sa University of the Philippines, Baguio. They ran after the student activists and beat them up. Uh, we were brought to jail in the Baguio jail, pero they were not able to charge us. Kung nakakapit bisig kami noon sa John Hay, eh, pinagtatapon nila kami sa bus. Pero when martial law was declared and all civil liberties and freedoms were um, uh, abused. So I got illegally arrested in April or June of 1974. Upon arrest, I was with my younger sister, Joji. We were tortured. Um, the torture was, aside from the slapping and beating around, was electric shock. We were brought to a safe house and then we were brought to somewhere near the sea. Of course, we thought the worst then because, I mean, it was martial law. Um, I was getting ready to be raped or to be killed. And then um, after two or three days, we were not yet brought to the camp because this is when they do the torture. But actually, they also do it in the camps. Um, they brought us to the military camp in Camp Olivas. And then when we arrived in the military camp, shortly thereafter, I was brought to the hospital. Actually, they give you a checkup eh, when you arrive in the camp, but siyempre it's by a military doctor who will just say that, oh, she seems to be in perfect health, even if we were showing them the burn marks here in, you know, in your toes, in your thumbs, to show that and telling them that we were actually subjected to this abuse. Pero shortly after that nga, I was diagnosed with hepatitis something. Na I really think that was in relation also to, to the torture that we received. Um, when I was there at Camp Olivas, we could hear torture happening there in the other room. Kasi we were kept kasi in an intelligence office. We were not put in the regular detention. We were kept in an intelligence office for more than a year. You could hear really cries of torture and then there was one day when there was a busload, no, I, in fact two busloads of political prisoners rounded up in a ra raid. And then you could see them. They were really, some couldn't walk, some had, they were really, really heavily tortured and really grabby yung stories of torture na naranasan ng mga political prisoners known. I get a feeling of deja vu. Kasi para ang nangyari noon, nangyayari uli ngayon. Tapos, a 
actually the number of killings is even much more already in the short time of this Duterte administration. Yung EJK, because that's not only against political dissenters, pero even those na pinatay sa drug war, na talagang 27,000, mga ganun. So, parang I think for victims of martial law, parang meron kang feeling of deja vu. And then, syempre, what we want nga sana, is never again, to never forget, to never forget what happened then. There's already martial law in Mindanao. Ano? Diba? It has already been uh, extended for a second year. And then, if you look at what is happening sa wider society, parabang halos may de facto martial law. Kasi one, there has been the filling up of military personnel doon sa dapat ay civilian bureaucracy. My key positions, even DSWD, DILG, uh, you know, all of these have been filled up already with military people, generals, who have a, who have a mindset actually, eh. the mindset nga na lalo na with the support of the president, that they can do all of these things with impunity. <laughs> And then, the, the repression of all democratic dissent. They filed, they filed na charges against us. That was among the list that they were calling as terrorists. They filed charges against the political opposition. They put the Lima in jail. They filed charges against Trillanes and some the vice president, other senators. So. And then look what they did to the Supreme Court. Ano? They took out the Chief Justice and then... So they are really systematically closing all democratic dissent. Tapos, ipaglaban mo ang democratic kong karapatan mo sa lupa, sa trabaho. You are branded as terrorists and you are, I mean, subject to your security is threatened and everything. So. And then ngayon nga, with this national task force to end the communist local armed conflict, uh, Executive Order 70 and the whole of nation approach, they're even using already really all of the agencies of the state against groups that they consider enemies of the state. Pero this is not only the armed groups, but actually democratic organizations like the Cordillera People's Alliance and other organizations. Kaya, Hindi man niya dinedeklara pa para sa buong Pilipinas, actually, halos may de facto martial law na. Naggugumiit lang ang mamamayan sa kanilang pag, uh, pagtayo, sa kanilang karapatan. Kaya lang, you look at the number of killings, trumped up charges, um, eva forced evacuations, you know, political prisoners. Talagang kwan, these are already manifestations that actually you already have a dictatorship, even if not yet formally declared. When we judge a certain period in history, dapat all rounded din natin titignan. Pero titignan din natin talaga kung ano yung mas mabibigat. At saka, yung human rights violations committed against thousands of people, I think no amount of sasabihin nilang disiplina, hindi lang naman disiplina yung sinasabi, eh, yung construction of roads, the infrastructure, etc. Ganun, kasi yun yung claim nga na accomplishments. Pero I think no amount of that can... Uh, Parabang these are just outward trappings. Yung katotohanan nun ay thousands of Filipinos were really severely um, abused, their rights violated during martial law. At I think, syempre lalo na kung biktima ang tinatanong mo, ito ang pinaka-defining feature of martial law. Kaya syempre, kaya nga nakikitunggali kami dyan sa mga uh, yun nga, may pagtingin na 
oh, this period naman gave, brought us progress and everything. And we want to bring it back to the basics that human rights violations were severely committed and that they shouldn't be allowed. Wala akong pinagsisisihan. In fact, looking back on my life, mm. I think I, le I led a good life. <laughs> um, I think marami akong natutunan. Mm. I think I lived for others, not only for myself. At saka, I think meron akong naituro sa the younger activists ganyan. so wala akong wala akong pinagsisisihan and i am proud of what i have done and what i continue to do so from a youth activist then i'm already a senior citizen now but of course the struggle for um, systemic changes in philippine society such that the wealth of society does not get monopolized by only a few, such that the farmers can own the land that they till, such that the workers can have a decent wage and decent living conditions, such that we, indigenous peoples, can own our ancestral lands and define our self-determined development. Um, kailangan ipaglaban ang mga ito. Yung mga kabataan, because we, you, young people, are at that stage in your life where, uh, yun, there is still the youthful idealism, trying to change society for the better, under conditions when there is already a clear direction towards dictatorship and martial law. Parang talagang kailangan muli like during the first quarter storm and the struggle against the Marcos dictatorship, kailangan muli na yung kabataan ay panghawakan ang kanilang historical na, na papel bilang tagapagmana ng unfinished revolution at tagapagpatuloy nito until we have a better Philippine society for the future generations.